this is my February wrap up. It's going up quite late this month just because I really didn't want to film this video. I'm gonna be honest, I read 26 books in February and that's just too many to talk about in a wrap up. So I am really regretting not doing a mid month wrap up, but in my defense, I was really focusing on reading. So I'm not really sure what the balance there could have been. I didn't make it to my book of day that I was trying to do 29 books in 29 days. I only read 26 because I got really distracted because my husband and I decided to watch The Traitors in February and we ended up binge watching two and a half seasons <laughs> in one month. So it was a bit much. So I'm not going to spend ages talking about all of these books. There are some that I don't really have much to say about and others that I want to go into a bit more detail in and probably do a full review on. So I've broken this up into sections. First of all, we're going to talk about the novellas that I read. Starting off, I made the decision to start the Murderbot Diaries in February and I read books one, two and three, which I don't own yet. I started listening to these on audiobook because the they are free on the audiobook Audible library, which is very exciting. I gave the first two four stars. Actually, I gave them all four stars. I really, really enjoyed the series. So if you don't know what this is about, there is a character called Murderbot who is literally a robot. It is kind of human-like and it has a face and everything. It doesn't want to be a Murderbot anymore. <laughs> Something happened in its past and that caused it to kind of change career paths. It's trying to keep that secret from everyone because people don't tend to trust Murderbots. It's very, very interesting and this one kind of has a mystery to it. If I have to pick out the three, this one is definitely my favourite so far. Just because I really like the introduction to Murderbot. But I can't wait to carry on with this series, it's so, so good. And I'm going to collect them all in hardback as well. And I can't wait to see what happens next. I also listened to Worst Wingman Ever by Abby Jimenez. This is her short novella. It's I think like 60 pages. It's a romance book. It's like a meet cute sort of situation. It's part of a collection of short story meet cutes and I enjoyed it. I don't really have much to say about it. It's Abby Jimenez. I really like her writing. I give this one four stars. I really enjoyed the couple. I thought it was really cute as it should have been. So it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Next, we're going to talk about the graphic novels that I read. The first one being The Tea Dragon Society. This is the first book in a graphic novel trilogy. And I only read the first one in February because I really enjoyed the first, but I didn't really feel the need to rush out and request the others from the library. They wouldn't have arrived in February anyway, so I didn't really want to rush and try and get hold of them. So this is set in a fantasy world where tea dragons are real. The main character is a young girl and she comes across the tea dragon shop and she learns to look after tea dragons and make tea and it's lovely. And she sparks a friendship with someone who feels very out of place and kind of starts to give them the confidence to be themselves. I gave this one four stars. Everything ran out of battery and I threw a bit of a strop so I didn't finish my video the other night. This is why I didn't want to record it in the first place because it's too long and I think this video is cursed. So carrying on, I was just about to tell you that I finished Laura Olympus. I read five volumes which were all a reread for me and I love them. I've given all of these four stars. I think the first one was a bit iffy when I first read it but upon a reread I am appreciating what the author is doing more. I need to catch up on the web comics version because these are all available for free on the internet and I do really want to carry on with the series. I think I got up to season two on my original read of it which hasn't been published yet so I finished at the end of season one this time around and then when I'm next in the mood I'm going to marathon season two and see if that's finished. Are we on season three now? I'm not actually sure. So this is a Hades and Persephone retelling. It's set in Olympus which is a city. It's modernized. They've all got phones and computers and stuff but it still follows the gods and goddesses. Persephone, this pink person at the bottom, she has a very over protective mother who didn't want her to go to Olympus by herself but her mother agreed that she could go as long as she lives with a bunch of women who basically don't like men and don't allow men into their zone. Persephone meets Hades, obviously the king of the underworld and has feelings for him and it's a bit awkward at first because he is like thousands of years old and she's only 19 and this is kind of addressed. It's not addressed early enough for my liking but it is addressed later on in the series and I love this graphic novel series so much. I can't wait to get my hands on the next physical ones. I think the next one's coming out in like June or something. But I just adore the art style. In this first volume, you can kind of tell that the author wasn't expecting it to go to print because a lot of it is very dark and it doesn't work so well in print, but it looks very good on the webcomic. And then afterwards, I think she started to lighten things up a bit and made it a bit more easily read. So I'm so glad that I started rereading this. I can't wait to carry on with my reread. I'm just really excited. Next, I have two graphic novels that I don't think I've spoken about yet. I will obviously delete this if I have. The first one being Luna. This was awful. I gave this one two stars, I think. Let me just double check. Yeah, this got two stars. It was atrocious. It's kind of about a, a cult based on Charles Mack. 
Manson. And then it has vampires also, and it's just, it's not very well told. I didn't like it, so I don't really want to talk about it anymore. And then the other one that I read, I gave two and a half stars, and that was Unearth, volume one. This is set in Mexico, and there's this weird virus thing happening. These people go into a cave, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, and then things start to, like, get into their heads, and they start hearing things. It's all very weird, and it was very intriguing, but the storytelling was rough. It was kind of jumping about all over the place. I couldn't tell who the characters were because they all looked the same. So they were jumping, I was jumping from point to point and I couldn't really tell what was going on. I really struggled to follow the story. This is kind of gross. It's like gross horror which I do sometimes enjoy, but not this time. I also read Our Little Secret, which is a graphic memoir. This is about a woman who was groomed by an adult when she was just, I think, 14. She had a really rough home life and her mum left her with her dad and they were very, very poor. They were living in poverty and this man took advantage of her and it's kind of her telling her story and how she tried to go through the courts, get justice, and the courts were basically useless. Her lawyer also took advantage of her and didn't do a good job at all. So it was very, very upsetting, but very well told, I thought. So I've given this one five stars because the art style was just brilliant. It made me feel so many emotions and I really appreciate what the author has told us here. I read A Guest in the House. This is a queer horror graphic novel and I only gave it three stars. I've honestly forgotten most of it and that's not a good sign. This is about a woman who marries a man who already has a child and she's very not happy in her relationship and she's constantly feeling like she's being compared to the ex-wife who passed away and it's just not a good time. I thought this book was just okay and not very memorable so I've only given it three stars. I've not really enjoyed many of this author's work so I'm probably not going to bother picking up much more by her. And then I did a marathon of Something is Killing the Children. I read books one through to five and I'm waiting on volume six to come in from the library. This is basically about monster hunters and it's kind of got a supernatural vibe. So it starts off in Wisconsin. A boy is playing a game at a sleepover with his friends. They go off into the woods and a monster kills all of them apart from this one boy. And the main character, this blonde girl, well. She comes into town and starts to try to save people but she doesn't really do it in the way that people want her to. She's part of a society of monster hunters and she's sort of rebelling against them and their ways for various reasons and I really really enjoy this series. It's honestly so good. It's very dark and gruesome. I think my favourite so far has been volume 4 which I think is the one with her backstory and I loved it. It was so, so good. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this series goes. It reminds me a lot of Supernatural with the monster hunting vibe and the darker aspects of stuff and the sort of children being raised by monster hunters. So really enjoyed this one, it's so, so good. I'm just checking, I think I gave all of them four stars apart from volume four, which I gave five stars. So absolutely brilliant. Those are all the graphic novels that I read. So now we can go on to actual novels and full size books. So I started the month off by finishing House of Flame and Shadow. I forgot the name of it then. This is the third Crescent City book. And I think I'm gonna do a full review on this one. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I didn't like it. I originally gave it three stars and now I think I'm probably gonna reduce that to like two, <laughs> two and a half. It's honestly a really poorly written book and I don't know what Sarah Gemmas was thinking here. There's not really much I can talk about without spoiling anything, but I think I was expecting after the ending of the second book more about certain characters and they were barely there. And at first I wasn't really looking forward to them being there, but they ended up being the most interesting part of the book and then they just got ignored <laughs> for the rest of it. So I didn't enjoy that. I also thought that everything was too easy. This is the final book in a trilogy or at least like an arc, I think. And it was meant to be like the big finale, but the bad guys were never really that much of a threat. I don't think they could have been because they their background is, without spoiling anything, kind of like high, highly powered. They were fought off really, really easily. I didn't like Bryce in this one and I didn't like two of the points of view either, Ethan and, I can't remember the mermaid guy's name, I can never remember it. Their points of view were useless. I don't know why Ethan was a character and his storyline was just crap. A storyline that he got involved in as well was mainly focused around him instead of the female characters who should have been the focus and I did not appreciate that. So this was honestly just a crap book and I'm gonna do a full spoilery review, I think. I also read Just One Damn Thing After Another. This is the first book in a time travel series in this world or in this book. Um, it's set in the UK and there is a Institute of Historical Research called St Mary's, which basically employs people to be time travellers. They go back in time, do research and stuff, and they're not meant to touch anything as they're going back in time because it could interfere with things. You know, the whole rules of time travel. I thought this one was kind of meandering and it was way too long. So it's physically, it's just over 400 pages, but I think it could have been shortened because I just didn't like it. There were dinosaurs, which were really cool. I have to admit the dinosaurs were pretty great, but the author didn't do a very good job of tightening the story and 
happened, I think it could have been a lot better. And that's a shame because I really enjoy time travel stuff, but I don't think I'm going to carry on with this series because I'm not sold on her writing. If you have read this series and you didn't like the first one but think that the series gets better, let me know and I'll carry on borrowing them from the library. I was just not a fan of this one, I'm really disappointed. There was also a relationship which I really didn't like. At one point the main character and her love interest are travelling back from somewhere by car. They crash and then they have sex on the car bonnet and I was just kind of like what are you thinking right now? Why would you do that in the middle of the English countryside? <laughs> There's also a miscarriage subplot but it doesn't really talk about it very much. It's kind of over and done with within like 10 pages so yeah, not a fan of this one, but it wasn't horrific. I like the concept, so I've given this one three stars. I also read God Killer, which I gave three stars as well. So this one is about a woman who, when she was younger, her whole family were killed by a fire god. They were about to be sacrificed actually by the villagers who were worshipping this new fire god, whereas previously the villagers had worshipped the sea god. And her father sacrificed himself in order to just save her. There was no hope for any of her other family members or siblings. And she unfortunately lost a leg in the process. And now she has grown up to become a god killer and the kind of purpose is to rid the world of gods because they're annoying and really awful and she doesn't want anything like that to happen again. I thought the world building in this one was a little iffy, I thought it could have been a lot better. It doesn't just follow this main character's point of view, can you tell I've forgotten her name by the way? It jumps around and follows a couple of other people so there's a young girl who's just lost her family and she is kind of attached to a god and doesn't know how to get rid of him and there's also an ex-knight who is kind of going on a mission for his friend who is the king. The whole history of it was very odd, so all of the conflict has already happened in this world and the people have fought off the gods and made little communities for themselves and stuff, but there are still some gods sort of hanging around, so it's kind of like after the war and now something else is building and I don't really love those kinds of stories, especially when they're not very well it's not that it wasn't well written, not very well described. It felt like we got the information as and when we needed it rather than it being like scattered throughout the story, which I would have preferred. This definitely isn't a bad book, like I said I've given it three stars, but it's just not the most well put together fantasy world, I don't think. It was interesting and I might read the sequel, but probably only to recap it if there is a third book. It's also under 300 pages long, which is very short for a fantasy novel, and I do wonder if this book series could have just been condensed into one but the publisher wanted to do a duology and that meant that the meandering in the first part of this book was a bit overstretched because it could have been condensed into like I don't know 600 pages or something um, and maybe the storytelling would have been better and I would have understood the world a little bit more. I read No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall and I gave this one four stars, she's one of my all-time favourite authors. This is an adult thriller book, her second one, and I did really enjoy this. So this is about three siblings who are all girls, now women, and when they were younger their parents were killed in their rich fancy mansion that they lived in. And the girls were there and one of them in particular is kind of accused of murder but there's no evidence so they're all sort of let go and the case is closed. Or well, closed, it's left unresolved but they're not actively looking into it anymore. So you kind of get all three of their points of view and you're trying to piece together what happened that night and the events that led up to it. I didn't love some of the characterization in this one, I just thought it was a little bit meh, but I do really like Kate Alice Marshall's writing style and I love the twistiness of it. I really enjoyed the relationship between the main character and her husband. It's not the best relationship at all, it's absolutely awful, but I like the way that it was portrayed and how it kind of helped develop the main character's personality and character and how she could grow from there. If that makes sense, it was really good, so I enjoyed this one. And then I'm going to end this video on kind of a sour note because I didn't enjoy the other two books that I read. The first one being Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. I read this author's debut book, Miracle Creek, and loved it. I gave it five stars. This one I have given two because it wasn't good. So I thought this one was going to be a bit more of a mystery book because the basic premise is that the main character sees her younger brother who is autistic running back to the house and he's not meant to be on his own, he's probably just gone for a walk with his dad but his dad, their dad, is nowhere to be found. So she's concerned and she's not sure whether to say something or not and then in the end it does become a sort of missing person case. It's kind of more of a literary fiction book where they're trying to get the brother who is non-verbal to be able to communicate and say where his dad is or what happened to him. And it's kind of a story of how the family worked together, how the brother grew up with autism in this way, and how he was able to cope, and how the family had to also adapt having a family member who is non-verbal. I don't think I didn't like this just because of the way 
I was expecting something else because I definitely was expecting more of a mystery because I really like Angie Kim's writing. It's just this one was just really quite boring and it didn't really hold my interest. So I'm really disappointed by this one. I'm sad that I pre-ordered it and I pre-ordered House of Flame and Shadow as well. So maybe I just shouldn't pre-order books <laughs> because this was boring. And speaking of boring, the last book I want to talk about is also really, really dull and that was Tom Lake. This is literary fiction about a woman who lives in a farm on a farm with her husband and her three children. They're living together during the first kind of wave of COVID. So they're in lockdown. And the mother is sharing her story of when she was kind of an, an up and coming actress and she met a guy. And it's a story of her meeting that guy and getting to know him and stuff in their very brief relationship. It, yeah, it was just boring. Nothing happened in this relationship. I don't know why it was such an interesting topic to talk about with their kids. One of the daughters was very intrigued by it because it, he was a famous movie star. The, ex person, ex boyfriend. And I think that's why she was interested, but honestly nothing happened. It was really boring. And I only read it because I thought it was going to be nominated for the women's prize and it wasn't. So I completely wasted my time and my energy. So that was really disappointing. And that is the end of my wrap up. I think next year I do this challenge and try to read 29 books in 29 days or 28, it will be next year. I will probably do two wrap ups, one mid month and then one at the end of the month because trying to talk about this many books in one go is tiring. So I won't be doing that again. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll speak to you all in the next one. Bye.